In this session, we'll look at how Autodesk Vehicle Tracking can help us analyze the vertical clearance of a vehicle path. Note that this session represents part one of a two-part series. In this recording, we'll perform a vertical clearance analysis using a Civil 3D profile. First, we'll take a quick tour of the drawing. I'm going to zoom in. Right here, we have an alignment called Center Street. Over here, I've got an existing ground surface called EG. If I pan the drawing up, we will find a profile view where I have sampled that existing ground surface. Now, let's assume that this alignment represents a vehicle path. I would like to ensure that the intended vehicles driving along this path have an acceptable amount of vertical clearance. Fortunately, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking makes it very easy to test drive everything from fire protection vehicles to delivery vehicles to passenger cars along a Civil 3D profile. Let's take a look. I'm going to zoom in on the profile view. And then the first thing I need to do is acknowledge that this profile view is using an exaggerated Y scale. To perform an accurate vertical clearance analysis, we'll need to use a profile view having a vertical scale of 1 to 1. Now, I could copy this profile or I could create a new one with a different style. Just to save time, I'm going to change the style of this view. I'll do that by selecting it. I'll right click and I'll come down and choose Edit Profile View Style. Here on the Graph tab, I'm going to set the vertical exaggeration to 1 and then I'll click OK and then I'll zoom in. To drive a vehicle along this profile, I'm going to select the Vehicle Tracking Ribbon tab, and then in the Swept Paths panel, I'll choose Vertical Clearance. This will bring up the Vehicle Tracking Library. As you can see, my resolution is preventing the entire dialog box from displaying on screen. From here, I can select my desired vehicle. Now, I happen to have a passenger car in this file. Before I proceed, take a look at the diagram. We can see the measurement for the minimum body ground clearance. This represents a default value. If your vertical clearance analysis requires a very specific vehicle, you'll want to edit the properties of this vehicle or create a new one. For example, if I right click on this, I can choose Edit. We'll choose Advanced. I'll click Edit again. And then I could go through the various tabs and dial up all of these settings to meet my needs. For right now, I'm going to keep everything as is. Let me cancel out. We'll stick with the default car and I'll choose Proceed. I'll click OK, and then I'll select my profile. When I do, vehicle tracking pops up a message to remind me that I'm using the default clearance value. That's fine. I'll click Yes. I'll press Escape. And if we zoom in, we can see the vehicle sitting on that profile. We can also see the envelope representing the path of the body. If I pan this down, we'll find that the vehicle has no problems driving along this surface profile. Now that stands to reason because this profile represents an existing roadway. Let's pan back. I'm going to remove this path. I'll do it by selecting it and I'll press delete. And let's swap out the profile. We'll do that by selecting the view. I'll choose Profile View Properties, and here on the Profiles tab, I'm going to turn off the existing ground profile, and let's turn on a finished grade profile that's a little bit more aggressive. Once again, I'll choose Vertical Clearance. We're going to go with that same passenger car, and I'll choose Proceed. I'll select the profile, and then I'll acknowledge the default clearance measurement, and notice we now see a pair of warnings. These warning symbols will appear each time that body envelope intersects the profile. If I zoom in, very easy to see where that happened. I'm going to zoom back out and we'll pan this over. To further visualize this, I can come up and choose Place Outline. I can then select the path, and I can drag the vehicle back and forth along the profile. Now at first glance, it kind of looks like a land speeder. I'm going to come over and turn on the chassis outlines. And as I drag this over, we can see the vehicle raise up. And as it gets over the hill, when it comes down, the body penetrates the ground. If I want, I could click to place a vehicle outline at that location. And I'll press Escape when finished. Now that I'm finished with this analysis, we'll delete the path. I'll do that by selecting it, and I'll press Delete. So, very easy to ensure a selected design vehicle has the appropriate ground clearance when navigating a profile. Let's look at one more vehicle. I'm going to go back to Vertical Clearance. And in the library, I'm going to select this WB40 Intermediate Semi-Trailer. This is an articulated vehicle. I'll choose Proceed. I'll select the profile, and then I'll accept the default vertical clearance measurements. I'll press Escape when finished. Note the warning symbols. Also notice what happened with the path. I chose this vehicle to show you that an articulated vehicle will actually stop if it's forced to go beyond its maximum vertical articulation. In the event vertical articulation is a concern, this default value can also be adjusted in the vehicle definition to match your specific needs. Let's take a look at where that value is located. I'm going to bring up the library. 
I will then right click on this vehicle and I'll choose edit a copy for right now. I will then choose advanced. We'll drag this over. I'll click edit. And then if we go to the couplings tab, we'll find the maximum vertical angle measurement right here. For now, I'm going to keep everything the way it is. I'm going to choose cancel to close out of all these dialog boxes and we'll return to the drawing. As you can see, Autodesk Vehicle Tracking makes it easy to analyze the vertical clearance of a vehicle path by leveraging a civil 3D profile. That being said, we don't have to stop with a simple profile analysis. Using vehicle tracking, we can also visualize ground conflicts by comparing the full swept path of a 3D vehicle to a civil 3D surface. We'll take a look at that workflow in the next session. Would you like to explore other Autodesk infrastructure ideas and workflows? If so, please visit the Civil Immersion blog by scanning the QR code or by following the URL listed below.